Our new Jacoletto chair is Dr. Carlotta Berry. Dr. Berry, please join me on stage. And let's go ahead and get your medallion. And once again, as a token of this honor, we have a medallion equally as heavy, um, listing the former holders of this. And so we have Robert Throne, Mark Yoder, and Ed Wheeler, and now our Dr. Carlotta Berry. So if you would join me. And so if you would join me in congratulations. Thank you. I don't know, you're fine. The Dr. J. Giacoletto Endowed Chair in Electrical and Computer Engineering honors the legacy of Lawrence Giacoletto, a distinguished engineer and educator who graduated from Rose Hulman in 1938. Giacoletto earned 22 patents, taught thousands of future engineers as a professor at Michigan State University, and was a distinguished IEEE Fellow. Our new Giacoletto Chairholder is Dr. Carlotta Berry. Dr. Berry has always been an advocate for multidisciplinary robotics education as well as diversifying STEM. As part of her efforts, she co-founded the multidisciplinary minor in robotics and the Rose Building Undergraduate University Scholarship and Professional Development Program. Probably more aware of that or more commonly as the Rosebud Program on campus. During her sabbaticals, she co-founded the Black and Engineering and Black and Robotics nonprofit organizations. At the same time, she worked as an automation engineering contractor for the Eli Lilly Manufacturing and Global Robotics Group. She has degrees in mathematics and electrical engineering from Spelman College, Georgia Tech, Wayne State University, and Vanderbilt University. Dr. Berry has given extensive service to her community and profession through FIRST Robotics, VEX Robotics, Girl Scouts, IEEE, and the American Society for Engineering Education. She was recently recognized as an ASWE Fellow and the Technical Foundation for Youth Fellow. Congratulations, Dr. Berry, on your appointment. a lot of what I'm going to say ties really closely to both presentations we just heard. Dr. Reed Smith is actually co-founder of Black in Engineering with me as well as Dr. Monica Cox at Ohio, the, sorry, Ohio State University. And um, a lot of what I will present today is about multidisciplinary intersectionality of robotics as well as me as a black woman engineer and professor and how that all comes together to direct not only my teaching, my research, but also my service. I was also on sabbatical January 2020 until, well, March 2020 when we all went home till now. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, although happy to be back as well. And so while I was on sabbatical, I came up with this thing that I'm calling the Nowhere Stimulus. And I would like to thank Ella because she actually inspired these ideas in me when I was preparing to become a full professor. And she was looking at all the things I did and she was like, you have got to find a way to bring all this together. And the way that I came up with that was I bring STEM and robotics to people and I bring people to STEM and robotics to educate and diversify the profession. And I was meant to be an educator and a teacher. And even while I was on sabbatical, I was finding ways to do that. And I did it a lot on social media. Some people here have said they saw some of my work. And when I would try to find things, I'm like, man, I can't find that post I made. So I came up with this word that I could search for to easily find things I wanted to get back to. And it became a nowhere stimulus. So I'm a black woman that promotes STEM to people. And I also provoke, promote diversity in STEM. And it has no meaning because it's marrying a French word with an English word. So therefore, I can always find my things. And so, <laughs> and so the circle is me the educator, me as the roboticist, and me advocating for STEM in all of its different forms and what that means. And the cool thing about it, and I'd like to thank Dave Fisher who started us on this graphic many, many moons ago, and it just keeps iterating and morphing, is that robotics can, can bring together people from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, software engineering, art. Robotics is really great STEAM. I gave a lot of STEAM presentations to kids while I was on sabbatical. 
biomedical engineers, as well as people in the humanities, right? We can, because I, my research area is human robot interaction, that's psychologists and sociologists, because you can't just look at the technical aspects of robotics, but how do people respond to the, to the robot? I did a post recently about the uncanny valley, because people are now starting to make robots that look too much like people. And there becomes a certain threshold where you're creeping me out because you're not helping me. Um, I was actually on the radio on Tuesday night and I did an interview and they asked me a question about something that's not going to be politically correct, but robots as mates for people who don't have mates. Um, and I think we're kind of going over the line a little bit. So I talked a little bit about that as well and some of the creepy things that people are starting to do with robotics. So this is why we need all of these disciplines involved and in the room so that you can have those conversations. I've also been doing presentations about AI bias and AI ethics. Another thing we're starting to discover in machine learning is that based upon the data that goes in, um, we've seen these systems become anti-Semitic, we've seen them become racist, because it's, it's garbage in, garbage out. So that's why it's important to have these multidisciplinary teams and these diverse teams in the room. So this is what I propose to do for my chairship is keep this marrying of education, research, and service together. We have to keep bringing more people on this journey with us. I like, I like to say it's not a pipeline, it's an obstacle course, right? And you have to help people to navigate that obstacle course. There's detours, there's lots of ways in, there's lots of ways out, there's arrows, there's darts, and everyone in that obstacle course is not experiencing the same thing. So we have to look at this holistic approach to that. So the first thing is I am developing an advanced robotics course where every spring I will teach different robotics related topics. There's lots of opportunities in the robotics minor, industrial robotics, ROS is really big, robot operating system, classes on human robot interaction. So I've reached out to colleagues who I've been working with during my sabbatical who are going to help me design those, people from MathWorks and SparkFun and several other organizations, Open Robotics. Also, continuing to do research, but now using these advanced courses to recruit students to do work with me over the summer on human-robot interaction, heterogeneous te teaming, supervisory control, how do we take robotics technology and get it out in the world to work with humans in a way that is effective for them, whether they're techni technologically aware or not, right? And outreach, another big thing I did is looking how we get more kids from diverse populations into STEM in very non-traditional ways. I did this a lot on my sabbatical um, on Zoom, right? I, I um, have a workshop in a couple of weeks with a bunch of kids from Lagos, Nigeria, right? I can't fly to Nigeria to teach them robotics, but I can do it on Tinkercad, right? So looking at the different ways that we can connect with these diverse populations to bring them into STEM, and so I wanted to end by saying, I'm going to use my students who will do research with me and take my courses and bring them in to be Rose Holman ambassadors. I think it is so important that they not only see diverse students and populations, but also professors. So we definitely have opportunities there. But here are some examples of the way I've done this since I've been gone for the last year and a half. These are kids that the young lady in the top is at my alma mater, Spelman College in Atlanta. This young man at the bottom is nine years old. A lot of my workshops were designed for kids 12 and older. So I recruited a lot of cousins, nieces, and nephews. I recruited my 16-year-old nephew to do it. He didn't want to do it, but he didn't want to tell me no. So he just, he just gave the kid to this nine-year-old. The kid is designed for 12 and over. And the next week, his mother sends me a bill for a and I was like, that kid needs to do some stuff. I actually have new videos of him because he now has a whole science shirt and he's called Hendrix the STEM guy. So just from my nephew chucking the, the kid out the window, this kid is now inspired to study STEM. And he actually took connecting with code, I believe. He did from Rose Holman because I told his mom about it after he got the kid. So all of these young people are people who may or may not ever have done anything with robotics and STEM. But now because I have found a way to connect with them non-traditionally on TikTok, I have a TikTok channel, I have Twitter, I have all of that stuff that professors don't normally do, but those non-traditional ways, I'm now reaching people I wouldn't have otherwise and bringing them all together. So even though I am the chair for electrical and computer engineering, everything I do is multidisciplinary and will reach people in and outside of STEM. And I would like to thank Ella, I don't know where Ella is, for encouraging me to do
do this because I still have imposter syndrome. I talk to my students about it all the time, and this is not something I would normally do. As well as Dr. Stanford and everyone else for always supporting my work, and I'm done. <laughs>